Welcome to this uh, second lecture in the series of uh, talks of the Colombian Coffee Hub. My name is Alvaro Gaitan. I'm a scientist uh, working in, uh, with uh, coffee diseases at the Colombian uh, National Research Institute, uh, CENICAFE. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, climate change and how it affects diseases in coffee. So first, I guess everyone has, has heard a, a lot about climate change, either, either in the news or in magazines. Uh, we all the time uh, listen to uh, problems related with climate change. But recently, we have been uh, receiving uh, 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 news about connections between climate change and coffee. And, and it, they had to do with uh, the, how coffee is going to change under this new environment of, of climate change. And, Unfortunately, we are starting to, to feel those effects in our coffee production, uh, not only in Colombia, but in other places uh, around the world. So today we're going to see uh, a, a specific connection that is related with diseases in coffee. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, what happens then when the, the weather interacts with coffee and, again, how it connects with diseases. Uh, the first thing that we have to understand is that uh, in, or, uh, in order to have a disease, uh, we need a series of, of components happening at the same time. It's like uh, setting up a puzzle. Um, first, you need to have a right environment um, in which uh, the whole disease is going to develop. The second is you need to have a pathogen, and a pathogen is an organism that is able to cause disease. The third is, is a plant. In, this, in our case, it's a coffee plant that will be susceptible to have this particular disease. And the fourth component is, is the human, is the human activity. Somehow we help diseases or we can stop diseases, and we also play a role in how diseases develop. So we're going to start checking these pieces of the puzzle, and the first one has to do with uh, the right environment, I mean the weather or the climate. And for this we have to realize that uh, coffee is cultivated in the tropics, and the tropics have this uh, special um, uh, environment which uh, uh, we refer as a, as a very stable environment uh, around the year. And uh, we can see here uh, that uh, in this uh, slide that uh, while in uh, the northern, northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, we had wide changes of, in temperature ar ar around the year. We have winter, we have summer, and we have a, a wide range of uh, maximum and minimum temperatures. In the tropics, it's very different. We have a very stable temperature uh, the whole 12 months of the year. Um, and the only change probably is related with the altitude. But in general, the temperature is very stable the whole year. Not only in the air, what we call the air temperature, but also if we look into the soil, it's happening the same. The soil um, uh, temperature remains very stable along the year. So this is one of the first characteristics. The second one is we have um, a, a recurrent pattern, pattern of rain. Um, and it's due to this uh, phenomenon that is called the uh, um, intertropical convergence zone, uh, which is a place uh, around the equator in which the humidity of, of the hemispheres uh, get together and originate this uh, uh, high humidity, high uh, probability of rain occurring in those places. And what happens to us is that we have this, this front of rain moving uh, from the north to the south and then from the south to the north. And that happens uh, very constantly uh, through the year. And we know exactly, or barely know very well, when are we going to have rainy months or when are we going to have dry months. And uh, Colombia is uh, very particular in this aspect in the, in the sense that we don't have a real dry period um, during the year. We have periods of more rain and periods of less rain. And that's very particular for us. Um, in, in our country. And, and then we can start looking into uh, a more detailed uh, variation that probably can be found. I mean, we have been talking about a worldwide phenomenon, uh, but then when you start looking into the plants, uh, you see that 
Uh, for example, here we see that the temperature on the surface of the leaves uh, change during the day. And, and this is very particular in the sense that um, when you have coffee growing under shade, uh, the temperature only reaches a certain uh, amount of degrees during the day that could be around 26, 28 degrees. But when you have coffee growing uh, under full uh, sun exposure, this temperature goes up, and it can go uh, up to mm, 34, 35 degrees. So um, it's very different to have coffee growing on the, on, under shade and coffee growing under full sun exposure. And, and this difference in temperature is, is very important uh, for the organisms that are living on, on those uh, leaves. So not only that, when we talk about uh, climate and weather, um, we have to realize that we have a, a, a very special conditions in every plot that uh, we are growing coffee. And that's because, at least here in Colombia, we have a mountain system. We have differences in altitudes that can change very quickly from one place to the other. We have a, a many species of trees growing around our coffee plantations. So they are also regulating the temperature and the humidity around the coffee plants. And uh, inside the coffee um, by itself, you can have um, differences in the densities, for example, where uh, coffee was planted. See, if you have many plants in a small place, the conditions of temperature and humidity are going to be different if you compare that with a place where you have very few plants in the same area. So um, this is giving us a variation in the, in, the, in the environment that is present in every single plot. So we have to start putting all these things together, and they create what we call the environment for that particular plot. And then we have to see how that uh, affects uh, the diseases. But in general, when, when, we, when you see all these uh, pieces together, in the tropics, we have very good conditions for these parasite organisms to develop. So we are talking about um, organisms that have a constant temperature during the whole year. They don't have to worry about uh, snow or a, a very hot summer. Um, we have organisms that have a constant uh, amount of humidity of water during the whole year, so they don't have to worry about dry conditions or very wet conditions because the, 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 the system is very stable around them. So it's, they, it's giving them the opportunity to attack plants basically the whole year. So uh, in our case, when we look at diseases, we see a constant threat of pathogens on uh, the coffee plants. So that's, that's the first component that is very particular to, to uh, our uh, environment where we grow coffee. Then uh, we have to start looking into, well, what kind of parasites or what kind of organisms can cause disease in, um, in coffee? And again, I mean, the same as humans get sick, plants get sick. And basically many of the organisms in general that produce diseases in humans are able to produce diseases in plants. And, in plants, there is a particular um, kind of organisms that can attack them, and that is other plants. We are not going to talk about them today, but we know that other plants can compete with coffee on ca or can start uh, parasiting coffee. Um, we have also insects, which um, can uh, eat uh, the berries, can eat the leaves, uh, also attack uh, uh, the trunk of the tree. But today, since we're talking about diseases, we're going to talk about pathogens. And, and in pathogens, we have to uh, differentiate basically uh, four or five, five kinds. And uh, we, we have nematodes, which are like small worms. We have uh, bacteria, like the bacteria we know uh, and, uh, everywhere. We have viruses. And also we have fungi. And, and in coffee, from all these organisms, fungi are the most important ones. They are, they are the more uh, threatening organisms for coffee. And we, we know that there are about 17 different diseases caused by fungi um, attacking coffee. And very few of, uh, let's say, bacteria or viruses or nematodes. And our main concern is all the time fungi. Um, and fungi, they need water. That's one of the, 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 the basic uh, conditions that they need to, to survive. Um, and, because, and this is because in their life cycle, uh, they need water to, to move from one plant to another plant. They need water to, to germinate, to, to go from this little seed that we call 
um, conidia and start growing uh, a new fung fungus. Um, and they all the time need water for all these uh, uh, parasitism processes that they have. And also they need a good temperature range to start um, living and uh, reproducing and doing all their, their, their life needs. So basically this is the, the, the general uh, life cycle of a fungus. It, is, it starts to disseminate, to move from, from one plant and start going into other plants. Uh, then when it arrives, uh, they infect the plant, they start attacking the tissues where they know what to do. And after that, they colonize those tissues and start to produce new uh, fungi to go and start the cycle again. So this is uh, the general um, uh, cycle that we try to understand in order to, to see what, uh, what can we do about uh, diseases. Uh, so when we connect the physiology or the way um, these fungi live and the weather that we now know that we have in the tropics, um, we can start correlating um, some situations in which, for example, if we have higher precipitations, um, good amount of water, that's the moment when fungi uh, problems are going to start. Um, and when that connection between the amount of water and in this case the amount of rain that is falling is, is worse because uh, the presence of phenomena as, uh, for example, La Nina, which is a, a Pacific phenomenon where it, that increases the rain that is falling on the coffee plantations, then we start going into a situation where fungal diseases are going to be even uh, more important than in other uh, situations. So in, when we talk about phenomena of, of La Nina or um, these changes in the normal patterns of rain uh, falling, uh, then we start, we start to correlate weather with climate change, which is uh, our main concern right now. Um, and then when we go and check into the fungi, um, I told you there are about 17 different diseases. There are some that are more important than others. And uh, worldwide, the most important disease caused by a fungi is the coffee rust. And I guess uh, everybody uh, heard a little bit about the coffee rust these days in the news. There are very serious problems with the, with the coffee rust in Central America. So um, it's no surprise. Coffee rust is one of the uh, oldest diseases known in coffee uh, and probably one of the oldest diseases uh, known in plants. And it's very devastating. It, it was the cause of, of removing all the plantations in, in the 19th century in India and uh, um, it, it, pro it provoked uh, the change from coffee into a tea, for example, in those areas. And it came to America in uh, 1970. It's a disease that was originated in Africa and uh, very s slowly was moving around the world. Um, there are, um, well, when we want to talk about the coffee rust, um, we have to know first that first is caused by a fungi. That's that's the first thing. Uh, the second is the the, the name of the fungus the, the, of this fungus is uh, Emilia vastatrix, and uh, as you can see here, uh, it. The fungus in this microscopic um, uh, picture, uh, uh, it moves around in, in some sort of capsules that we call conidia, and it goes into the plant and starts uh, eating the plant from, from inside and creates these uh, yellow uh, spots, uh, which are powdery in nature. You can, you can go and check on the leaves, and you find that the leaves um, are producing this yellow uh, powder. Um, and this is because the fungus is um, using the, the, the food from the plant to start to feed itself. So it's taking all the nutrients from the plant in order to continue with his life cycle. And um, this fungus is only able to attack the leaves. We are never going to see um, coffee rust attacking the beans, for example. Um, however, since the leaves are in charge of filling up the, the, the coffee berries, uh, when you attack the leaves, the coffee berries are not going to develop properly. And that's when we start to have problems because uh, although the, the fungus is not able to attack the, the berries, it's indirectly producing uh, um, an, arrest in, an arrest in the development of those berries. Uh, unfortunately, coffee rust is not the only um, disease that is important in coffee. 
Uh, there is another one that is called the coffee berry disease. It's uh, produced by a fungus that is called Coletotricum. And uh, let's say that fortunately is only present today in Africa. It's not, uh, it has not been able to get out of, out of Africa yet. But, but it's, it's, uh, very, uh, it's a disease that is very difficult to control because it, it attacks specifically the berries. So it, different from the coffee rust, the coffee berry disease uh, attacks the berries, the green berries, and produces a lot of uh, loss of yield. And uh, when you start looking around in, in, uh, in, in coffee plantations, you can find, you can find other diseases. Uh, one of the most common is what is called the pink disease. Uh, it's also uh, a fungus that is able to attack the berries and the leaves. And uh, as all the fungi, it, it has to do a lot with the presence of water um, in the environment. So again, every time we, we hear about uh, high precipitation, periods of uh, high uh, rain, rainfalls, then we have to start associating that with the increase of fungal diseases. Um, not only uh, the pink disease is present, also the iron spot is another disease that is able to attack uh, coffee. And one that is uh, very common in Central America is called uh, the American leaf spot. Uh, there in, in uh, Central America, they call it uh, gotera or ojo de gallo is, is the, the, the local name. And in uh, Central America, causes a lot of damage on the leaves and also on the berries. So we see that, at least in these few examples, um, we have several pathogens that are able to attack the berries or, as in the coffee rose, that attack the leaves and then produce an effect on the berries. So that's the, that was the second component. We have the climate on one side. We have the pathogens. Now, now we know that there are fungi and we know at least some of the diseases that are caused by fungi. We have to start looking into the third uh, part of the, of the puzzle, and that's susceptible plants. Those, in general, um, it's possible to find plants that are able to defend themselves um, from these pathogens. And uh, they have something that is called genetic resistance. So they somehow they know how to deal with these pathogens, and they don't let them attack them. However, when you look into the... Um, commercially available varieties of coffee, basically all of them are susceptible. They don't have genetic resistance. So um, they, uh, they, are, they have all the, um, they provide all the opportunities to, for the pathogens to attack them. So that's a big problem uh, around the world, and I guess many scientists have been working on that, trying to see how we can uh, improve these susceptible varieties, which are the commercial ones, and introduce some sort of genetic resistance. And uh, mostly all the improved varieties around the world have been somehow fixed in that way, in the way of they now have resistance mostly against uh, the coffee rust. Um, now, this work of putting resistance into the plants is not easy. In coffee, everything takes time. So when you want to produce a resistant plant, uh, you have to start crossing plants that are uh, agronomically important and plants that are uh, resistant to the disease and start trying to make in these kind of marriages between these two plants. And you start checking the, the sons, the grandsons, the grand grandsons. And, and in that process, you select the ones that are really good in the field for their agronomical characteristics. Um, for their adaptation to the environment, for their cup quality, for example, and also the ones that have now resistance to the disease that you're looking for. So it's not an easy process. It, it takes a lot of time, but it's doable, and in many cases, uh, it has been very successful to, to get these resistant plants. And finally, the, the, the final piece of this puzzle is human activity. And uh, as I told you, we, when we go into the coffee plantations, we can either provide conditions for the diseases to develop or stop and make some sort of uh, activities in which we um, kind of slow down the development of diseases. Um, in these cases, for example, and, and, and again, one of the things that we see commonly is people uh, like to use high densities uh, in their plantations. When you have lots of plants in the same place, um, the temperature under the leaves, the humidity in the area, 
is very favorable for pathogens. And uh, one of the things that you have to handle is how many plants you can have in the plot. So usually we say that more than 10,000 plants in the same plot are very conductive for diseases to uh, show up. Um, also, when you have many plants in the same place, pathogens can move around very easily because the next plant that they are going to attack is very close. So that also favors uh, the activity of pathogens. Um, when, uh, when you take care of, of the coffee plantations, uh, if you don't uh, feed them properly, if you don't give them the right nutrients, you create these weak plants that uh, by themselves also they are, are more susceptible, they are um, less uh, tolerable, tolerable to pathogens. And uh, again, uh, all this fertilization is, is a key part of having plants uh, healthy and uh, uh, avoiding problems with diseases. Um, so when you put all these pieces together, the pathogen, the climate, the susceptible plant, and the human activities, and somehow they fit together, uh, that's when diseases show up. And uh, the effects uh, can be very different depending on what kind of, what kind of uh, attack is the fungus uh, or the disease doing. Since we're talking today about uh, fungus that attack the berries, uh, the main, main problem that we have is problems with the yield. Um, so I told you the plants are not able to, to, to fill the, the coffee berries. And then at the, at the end of the harvest, you find out that you are collecting less amount of coffee when you go into the, in the, into the plantations, or that you need to pick up more and more berries in order to process them and obtain one kilogram of parchment coffee. So um, this what we call the conversion factor that usually is uh, five kilograms of berries to produce one kilogram of parchment coffee can go, for example, up to eight to one, eight kilograms of berries to obtain only one kilogram of parchment coffee. So the efficiency of the whole cultivation process uh, goes down. And with diseases, for example, like the coffee rust, we have what we call a silent effect. We probably, you go into the, the plots, you collect the, the berries, and uh, you don't notice that you're collecting a little bit, little less berries every time. And that's because the, the rust is attacking the, the plantation and is reducing the yield. So over uh, four harvesting seasons, you can lose 25% of the, of, of the yield. And that means that you lost, uh, out of the four uh, harvest, harvest, you lost uh, one completely. So this is happening, uh, as I told you, in a silent uh, way, but actually is, is causing a problem to the producers. And also when plants are sick, they are not really uh, in the best shape to go into the next um, season uh, to produce more coffee. So sick plants take a lot of time to recover. Sick, uh, sick plants uh, don't um, produce new leaves very quickly, and then they are not ready uh, in, in, or they are not in the best condition to start producing coffee in the next season. Okay, so... Um, now talking about this human activity, um, it, some practices uh, like, for example, and I, I, I mentioned again, fertilizing uh, are going to help the plants because plants are going to be a little bit better in their health. They are going to produce leaves faster. They are going to recover if they were attacked uh, very soon. Um, also, we can help ourselves using, uh, for example, fungicides or other chemicals to protect the plants, um, but they have to be used in the right way. So uh, in general, poor nutrition or the use, for example, of uh, um, hard soils in, the, in those places where coffee is not growing pretty well, the roots are not developing well, um, or in some cases, plants can have also root diseases, we are, which are, we are not mentioning today, but all these things are uh, providing a, 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 a nutrition situation in the plant, which is not the best for um, producing coffee and is facilitating the attack of the pathogens. So in general, the first effect of diseases is a loss in yield, and uh, that is affecting directly the producers. But also we can uh, think about ways in which um, the quality gets affected. And it has to do with, first, the bean size, 
because again, since plants are not able to feed and, and fill properly the, the berries, uh, we end up with beans that are in, uh, smaller than usual. Um, in some cases, um, some diseases are able to uh, induce what we, which is called uh, early ripening, and it means that the, the berry it looks like ripe, like a ripe berry, but in reality, inside is not very well developed. So, and they are uh, harvest in the, at the wrong time. Um, also, we have uh, a weak uh, berry that, when is processed um, later after the harvesting, uh, is, it can be uh, degraded or it can be broken, and again, is going to be removed from the from the the lot of uh, the production place. And, and finally, when we talk about fungicides and the use of fungicides, we have to think also on the presence of fungicide residues on the beans. So uh, those are aspects that we um, think that are going to affect quality. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, they, uh, mm, cortemos y sigo con esa después. Okay, so now the, the question is, now that we know how these diseases are happening and what is the effect of the diseases, what can we do in order to um, protect the coffee plantations? How can we take care of those diseases? And uh, in our case, we, we like to focus this in an integrated manner. It's, it's not a single practice or a single activity which is going to take us out of the problem. We have to look at the problem from very different aspects and try to do what we call an integrated uh, disease management. And uh, it has to do with blocking one or more of these pieces in the puzzle. And uh, in this case, for example, if we have a susceptible plant, so if we have a susceptible plant, the best thing to do in that case is try to change that plant for a resistant plant. And then a resistant variety will block the whole process because we moved one of the pieces out of the puzzle. Um, if we have pathogens, that is another piece of the puzzle, then uh, we have to try to see if we can use natural enemies against those pathogens. And this is very important in coffee and it's very uh, efficient in the sense that in many cases there are natural enemies, other organisms that are controlling pathogens in the plantation. Um, if we have uh, human activities that are facilitating uh, the development of the disease, then we can change those activities and, for example, in, in, that, in that case, apply a fungicide. That's one of the things that we can do in those cases. And in case of the weather, well, we cannot control the weather, but we can be more aware of how the weather is behaving. So we can uh, check on the early alerts of, uh, of uh, uh, weather uh, we can monitor the weather to see what is happening, and based on, on the behavior of weather, we can take some action on that. So the idea here is to block one or more of those components of, uh, that are causing disease. Um, okay, I, when, when we talk about um, natural enemies, and, and I, I mentioned that when, when we, 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 we were trying to block the pathogen, natural enemies are very important in coffee because coffee is a very stable, um, uh, it provides a very stable environment. So we have a coffee plant that is going to be there for about 20 years, and many organisms, microorganisms, other organisms, insects, are living in that very stable environment. And they are not only living that, they are providing a service to the coffee plants. They are helping the coffee plants to protect, uh, protect them against other pathogens. And this is very critical when we uh, go and try to solve a disease problem applying chemicals, applying fungicides. Because when we kill, when we try to kill one fungus that is causing a problem, we are also killing other, which are natural enemies that are living in the same place. So we have to uh, try to reduce as much as possible the use of, of these chemicals so we don't change this balance of uh, natural enemies that are present in coffee plantations. Uh, in the human activities, well, the, the first thing that you can do is try to have young plants, young and healthy plants. Those are in, best, in the best condition to resist diseases, to recover from diseases, and also we can help them 
uh, providing a proper fertilization, uh, handling all the weeds in the plantation. So all these things are, are helping that plant to be uh, stronger to resist uh, uh, diseases and, and uh, recover very quickly. And also we can use chemicals, of course. That's one part of this integrative uh, management. And chemicals um, have to be used uh, first Applying the right molecule is not using any, any molecule. There are molecules that are specific for every pathogen, and you have to do the studies on that. You have to apply those chemicals at the right time. It's not applying frequently. It's just trying to find those moments where the chemical is going to be more effective and also using good uh, technology to apply the fungicides. And, and that's also um, uh, a concern that we have. So people don't overuse chemicals trying to solve a, a disease problem. And finally, with the weather, um, we have to be uh, what we call in Colombia climate smart. You have to uh, be aware of how the weather is changing. As I told you, how when, for example, the rain season is coming, or if this rain season is going to be uh, really uh, um, powerful because of effects like uh, La Nina. Um, in that case, you can start replacing varieties using resistant varieties. Uh, you have to uh, pay attention of these early alerts to see what is going to happen uh, ahead of, of, uh, of time. And in our case, we're working a lot of, of, on modeling, on trying to know how the weather is going to uh, behave in the future. So basically, this is our, our uh, compendium of uh, uh, how we look at the situation of climate change and diseases. Now, this is talking more on, on the farmer side, but... If we go on the consumer side, um, uh, there are also effects. And one of them is, uh, for example, the change in the bean size. Um, you can have in a health, healthy plant, uh, large bean, uh, beans being produced. Um, and when the plant is sick, when the leaves cannot fill these, these berries, then the size of the, of, the berry, of the beans are reduced. So we cannot expect to have like these really high quality beans that, that many people like. Um, we also may have problems with the early ripening, as I mentioned with one of the diseases, uh, the iron spot. So when uh, people in the, in the fields are collecting the berries, they collect many of them that are not in the proper stage of ripening, and that will reflect later um, after processing in the quality of coffee. Um, also, of course, you can have bean degradation when, when there, there are remains of fungi growing inside the beans. And uh, even if the process uh, goes uh, uh, in a way that you look that the, the beans are looking fine, maybe inside those beans you still can have effects of fungi growing in there, which also alter the, the quality. And at the end, uh, what we would like is to have a product that is, that is as clean as possible. Uh, and, and I mean as clean as possible in the sense that uh, the more people use fungicides, the more they use insecticides, uh, the higher the probability of having residues of those products in the coffee beans. So we would like to have a reduced use of these products in order to have a cleaner uh, product uh, for our customers at the end. So those are things that we have to be uh, really aware when, when we realize that all these factors to produce disease are occurring and when we hear reports of diseases around the world. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them.